All right, so let's look at another two sample example here. Okay, so say we've got a situation here. We've got a sample of men. We've got a sample of women. All right, and this person wants to know whether the pulses of men is, is actually less than the, the pulses of women. All right, so we've got our, once again, two samples of data summarized here. All right, so first of all, two samples, I got to think, okay, is there any way I can match these up? Can I treat them as matched pairs? Well, first of all, we see our, our sample sizes are different. Um, we don't we don't really have information that would link one man to one woman here, so I, I don't think there's any way we can match them up. All right, so they're going to be independent. Let's first state our hypotheses. So the the person was thinking should be less. Men should be less. All right, if I'm trying to test to see if men's are less, I have to assume that they're both the same. So here's how the most concise way to write the hypothesis. Now remember, it doesn't matter who I call group one, who I call group two. We'll just have men first, women second. As long as we stay consistent, it doesn't matter which one I have first. All right, so we're, we're going to do a left-tailed test, right? Just say alpha 0.05. All right, so when calculating our test statistic, right, we know now that we, when we have two samples, we really should think about pooling our variances. Okay, so notice when we're, when we're pooling, when we're making this decision, it's about the variances, not the standard deviations. Okay, so in the question, we actually were given our standard deviations. So notice when I'm plugging in, I got to square the standard deviations to look at the ratio of variances. Now, it may not seem like a big deal, but that can make a difference, right? Because, I mean, just in general, if you think about it, the ratio of A to B, that's not the same as the ratio of A squared to B squared, okay? So we, we do have to make sure we square those to get the right ratio. All right, so my ratio 0 0.054, it's close, but it's bigger than 0.5, so it's between 0.5 and 2. All right, so just using those kind of rudimentary guidelines, right? It's less than 2, but it's greater than 0.5. Let's go ahead and assume, okay, these variances are close enough to be equal, so we should pool. All right, so our pooled standard deviation, 9.87. So remember, the idea of the pooled standard deviation is we're using both of these sample standard deviations to estimate the same thing. Right, so 9.87 is somewhere in between these two. It's, it's essentially just a weighted average of the two. All right, so we've got now our pooled standard deviation, which we're using in the calculation of our test statistic. Our test statistic is negative 1.83. All right, critical value. So our T critical value, now when we're pooling, remember how we find our degrees of freedom. That's N1 plus N2 minus 2. So 35 degrees of freedom. All right, alpha 0.05. It's a left-tailed test. You can go to your table and look it up. So remember we're... Now here's one thing. that Depending on how your T-table is set up, some T-tables may have more degrees of freedom, but a lot of T-tables really only go up to about 30 where they're going to have every degree of freedom. All right, the one that I, I use... Here, we got this gap between 30 and 40. But remember, in our example, we're, we're at 35 degrees of freedom. It's right in between the two. Okay, so here, I'm either going to have to just kind of estimate this critical value. Okay, so between 30 and 40, it was a left-tailed test, alpha of 0.05. All right, so it would be in this column between 30 and 40. So that's telling me our critical value is somewhere between 1.684 and 1.697. Now, if I want a more exact one, I think the best way to do that is either is let's let's try Excel here, okay. So bringing up Excel, if I go here T inverse, all right. So remember this is a one-tailed test, so I want a negative critical value. So alpha 0.05, our degrees of freedom was 35. So the exact critical value that we would use here would be about negative. 1.6897. Remember, we we estimated it to be about negative 1.69. So our estimation was fine, but if we want a more exact one, 
That's one way to do it. Or you can graph it. So we estimated with the table to be between those numbers, say about negative 1.69-ish. With Excel, we found it's exactly this, or, or graph it. All right, p-value wise. So left tail test, we want the area to the left of this negative, negative test statistic. Again, 35 degrees of freedom. So we could estimate on our table. Again, 35 degrees of freedom here. So in between 30 and 40, uh, my test statistic is negative 1.83. So, so 1.83 would be somewhere between these two numbers. I'm, I'm somewhere in here. So an estimate of our p-value anywhere from 0.05 to 0.025. All right, we don't know exactly what it is, but we can, of course, do it with technology, Excel, graph it, however you want to do it. From there, draw my conclusion. My, criti my test statistic is in my rejection region. Right, My p-value is smaller than alpha, so we're going to reject. We have statistically significant results. Putting back in the context of this question, right? That's telling us the men's men's mean pulse rate here is actually less than women's. Now that we found a difference, let's estimate it. All right, 95%. Just go with the normal 95% confidence interval with our sample statistics. Um, remember, our degrees of freedom here is 35, and we are we are pooling, right? Our pooled standard deviation. Plugging into our formula, there we go. All right, so we're 95% sure that this, that our our difference in means that we're looking for is captured here. All right, so one more point to make here on on doing this stuff in Minitab. Okay, I don't actually have I don't have the data here in Minitab, but if we go to Stat Basic Statistics to Sample T, right, instead of saying both samples are in, in a column, we we don't have the data. We just have summarized data in this question. All right, one sample was the men were 21. Let's just make sure we know sample one is men. The mean here was 112.3. Standard deviation, 8.45. Notice mini tab it does ask for standard deviation, not variance. All right, here this was 16. Sample mean for women, 118.3. And sample standard deviation, 11.5. All right, so remember we decided to run this as a pooled to sample t test. I want to point this out in Minitab because by default Minitab has this box here that says assume equal variances unclicked. All right, that box is not clicked. So by default Minitab runs an unequal variance test. It runs an unpooled test. All right, if I want a pooled test and I want to do this in Minitab, I got to go in here and click assume equal variances. All right? Now we wanted a left-tailed test here, and notice left-tailed versus right-tailed, it, it does make a difference what you call sample one and sample two, so you gotta be careful with that. All right, but here, now our, it'll calculate S pooled for you. Remember what we calculated, 9.87, right? It'll calculate that for you. Um, it'll calculate your confidence interval, okay? And it'll also give you your test statistic, your p-value, degrees of freedom all that stuff that we just found on our own. Alright, so I hope this, this application was useful. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.